Hey YouTube, my name is Natalie. I'm a criminal defense attorney and welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be a reaction to Judge Lays Down the Law on Sovereign Citizen. This is on Van uh, Balion's channel and it looks like this is this th person's third time in front of this judge in Michigan. And I haven't seen the other videos, but this one just seemed really interesting. So I'm going to be checking it out and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, let's go. All right, good morning, Ms. Christensen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, good morning. We are back on the record in the 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Presqueville. <clears throat> Our next case on the docket is people of the state. I, semicolon, woman, oh, let me see. You guys probably can't even see this. Okay. I, semicolon, woman, comma, Angela Christensen. That's how we already know that we're dealing with a sovereign citizen. And now a word from our sponsor, Atlas VPN. So as I told you guys in the last video, I hate, like literally hate when I am online shopping for something and then that thing that I look for travels all around the internet following me. Like I could be on one website looking for a blue couch and then I log into Facebook and I see nothing but blue couch advertisements. So I head over to Instagram, same thing. I head over to Twitter, <laughs> there's the blue couch all over again. Now I don't even want the blue couch anymore. And that's because these companies use your IP address in order to track you and push advertisements towards you. Enter Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is a virtual private network that makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel. This way it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers, and hides your IP address and your online activities. I can tell you from experience that when using public Wi-Fi, things like your passwords can become compromised. One time when I was traveling in Chicago, I logged on to Netflix from a public Wi-Fi account. And right after that, every single one of my streaming services were compromised because they all had the same password. With Atlas VPN, you can protect yourself from things like that. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three year subscription for $1.99 per month with a money back guarantee. So get your deal by clicking the link in the video description box down below. Click that link to lock in your three year subscription for $1.99 per month with a 30 day money back guarantee. Now let's get back to our video. Michigan versus Angela Marie Christensen. It's filed 21-93185FH. We have Ms. Christensen attending by Zoom, representing herself. Washington attorney Mr. Radzibon is here in the court. I think it's kind of funny that it looks like she's home, appearing virtually, and for some reason is wearing a mask at home. And there could be reasons why you might need to do that, like maybe someone um, has been exposed or is positive and you're trying to avoid contracting it. But then like she has it under her nose anyway, so it doesn't serve any purpose and she's at home. So I just think that's kind of funny. Courtroom. We are providing public access both in the courtroom and online. And uh, Ms. Christensen, although you're hearing from your home, uh, for convenience sake, it might not feel like a court hearing, but it is a court hearing, so I'm going to ask you to please remove your, your hat. Oh, sorry. No worries. Okay, thank you. All right, so <clears throat> as we begin the hearing, um, just like last time, I'm required each time to remind you that you do have the right to the assistance of a lawyer, if you wish, and um, that includes the right to a lawyer at public expense, if you uh, were indigent, and that you've previously waived that right and wish to represent yourself. And so I guess I want to ask you again, do you uh, reaffirm that you'd like to represent yourself in this matter, or would you like to have a lawyer? No, I would like to self-govern, and I stand on my paperwork. That does not answer that question. <laughs> Self-govern. So think about it this way. Like even if you believe that you are um, a member of your own government, you're the representative of your own government, you're separate and apart from the United States. Even if a foreign government is sued, sometimes that happens, like they're sued or something like that. Um, or they're brought before, uh, or you know, actors on, on the part of the government or brought before an international court or something like that. Even when that happens, they have counsel to represent them. There are lawyers for the United States. There are lawyers 
for the UK. There are lawyers that represent countries. So whether or not you're a sovereign of a particular country does not mean that you should not get a lawyer that can represent you. So maybe that's something judges could say. Like even if you're sovereign and you stand on your own government, you can still have someone represent your government in court. Okay. So what we have today, you did file um, four written notices that asked for some type of relief. And we had adjourned the hearing to today uh, for any argument on that. So the prosecutor has, has had a chance to review them. So, Ms. Christensen, um, you say that you stand by the paperwork, and that's fine. I do have the paperwork in front of me. Is there any, is there any argument that you'd want to make uh, on your behalf right now to me in support of those claims, or do you wish to just uh, rely on the, on the written pleadings you filed? It is my wish to stand on my paperwork. Okay. Mr. I would love to see that paperwork. <laughs> Ratsbon, do the people have any argument in opposition to those four notices? Uh, Your Honor, I've reviewed the paperwork, and uh, I guess, while she may not recognize her honor state of the law, I, I don't believe that there's any relief that's recognized under law that would allow you to dismiss this, this case against her based on what she's supposed to be Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, Ms. Christensen, now I'm going to make a ruling on the, on the uh, notices, which I'm construing as some motion or request for relief. And that's the judge being nice, because if she filed things captioning them as notices, probably notice of her sovereignty or whatever the case may be, um, those are not motions. You're not necessarily asking the court to do anything. The court only rules on motions. They need to have a motion with an order that they can rule on. Um, and so um, there's really no reason that the judge even has to acknowledge improperly filed paperwork that doesn't conform with the rules, but he's choosing to do so here. And uh, I've got a, a written order that I'll enter. enter I'll, I'll read it at this point. Defendant who at this point in the case is representing herself, has filed four handwritten notices. These notices appear to seek relief in one form or another. As to the first notice, defendant asserts that she is a woman and not a defendant. The court finds that Angela Christensen is both a woman and a defendant in this criminal action. <laughs> to the extent the notice seeks relief, such relief is denied. I mean... Also true, right? Like, and it's of no moment. You know, you could be a man and a defendant, but you're the defendant here in this case. And yes, you also just happen to be a woman, which is far less important than you being the defendant. And um, the court will take judicial notice of the fact that she's a woman and a defendant and will not dismiss the case based on those reasons. Straw man arguments don't work here. As to the second notice, Defendant demands that any man or woman with a claim against her appear and present such claim in open court. To the extent that this notice seeks to invoke defendant's right to confront her accusers, this court will enforce that right. However, the right of confrontation does not require the complaining witnesses to appear at all pre-trial hearings, mm. but only the trial or any necessary evidentiary hearings. Oh, that's a very good point. So sometimes people that are not sovereign citizens will have this question, and it's a really good question. So basically, it's before you get to the trial or the motions hearing, there's a lot of administrative hearings that can take place. Uh, and I, I don't mean in, in, they're judicial, they're in a judicial body, but I mean, like, think of like an administrative assistance, like just to take care of like the administrative parts of the case, like setting court dates, um, you know, um, checking on discovery, making sure that there was a plea offer relayed, making sure the defendant understood it, making sure the defendant has a client, has an attorney. All of those are things that you could take care of in pre-trial status conferences, you know, arraignments, initial appearance, things of those nature. And the complaining witnesses, the witnesses for the prosecution, they do not need to appear at those hearings because it's not about whether or not the defendant is guilty or not guilty at those pretrial hearings, it's about the administration of justice and making sure that you have your proper court dates that are scheduled within a timely fashion, 
in compliance with the Constitution, that you've been apprised of your right to an attorney, that you understand the process before you get to the point where you go to motions and or trial. So the, there's no need for a complaining witness to be there. And the courts, as in the appellate courts, have long understood that complaining witnesses are not necessary to be present in order for the court to follow through with that administrative function. So to the extent that this notice seeks to require the appearance of any complaining witnesses at all pretrial hearings, such relief is denied. No, yeah, that's As to no. the third notice, defendant asserts that this court lacks authority over her and that only her creator has that authority. Without gainsaying the authority of the creator, it can be noted that religious traditions commonly recognize that the creator has instituted human authority as well. Yes. In this matter, the people of the state of Michigan, through ratifying the 1963 state constitution, as well as its predecessor constitutions, have established this court and its authority. The people of the state of Michigan, through their elected representatives, have established laws that apply in this court. And the people of this county have elected this judge to serve in this office. And this court has subject matter over this felony prosecution and has personal jurisdiction over this defendant. Any relief sought by this notice is denied. Perfectly and perfectly put, very well put. I used to clerk for a judge in Wicomico County Circuit Court who I thought had a very um, interesting way of putting it that I thought was also a great way of, of helping people to understand. So not only would we very occasionally on the shore run into sovereign citizens, not frequently, very, very occasionally, um, or infrequently we would run into them. We would also come across people that wanted to, um, that were selected for jury um, service, but did not want to serve. And there, some people really do have genuine reasons that they don't want to serve on a jury, one of them being a religious belief. Some people have a genuine religious belief that they should not sit in judgment of other people. Um, it's uh, It may be like a sect of Christianity or just like, a you know, maybe like a localized pervasive belief that they've been taught. Maybe it's more cultural. But some people believe that because they're Christians and the Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged, it is not their authority or power to sit in judgment of another person in a criminal case. And so we would have quite a few people during jury selection, and I was working for the courts at that time saying, you know, I don't want to sit in judgment of anyone else. And this judge would say very stoic, um, very formal judge. He'd been a judge for a very long time, maybe like 20 years, 30 years, something like that, a very long time. And he would say, okay, well, what is your religious belief? And all the time they would say that they were Christian. I didn't hear anyone say otherwise. And he would say, okay, so that means that you follow the Bible. And they would say, yes. And he was like, well, in the Bible, it also says to render unto Caesar that which is his. Are you aware of that? Yes. And do you know that that means that, you know, if you're following the Bible, it says to follow the government, right? And a part of our government uh, process is that you have to serve you know, at least present yourself to serve on a jury. And that is a part of rendering onto Caesar what is his, giving your service to your state, your government, your country. And a lot of the time people will be like, oh, well, that's true. You know, and like, maybe they come up with some other reason after that, or maybe they yield and eventually end up answering the necessary questions to see if they could sit on the jury. But I always thought that was a very elegant way of saying like, I recognize your religious beliefs. I respect your religious beliefs. I think he might have been a Christian himself. He never said that, obviously, but like, you know, I maybe even follow your religious beliefs. But despite your religious beliefs, there is a separation between the government and your religion, right? We have freedom of religion and freedom from religion. So a part of our um, civic duty is jury service. A part of our civic duty is to submit to the authority of the court. And in spite of whatever religious belief that you may genuinely have, that is going to be superseded by our governmental um, our obligations to our government. As to the fourth notice, defendant claims that this court and the government exist only because she allows them to exist. To the extent that this assertion reiterates the proposition that our constitutional republic is founded on the consent of the governed, such proposition is axiomatic as a general matter. <laughs> However, this proposition does not require that the government must obtain consent or permission from each individual person 
before exerting governmental authority over that person. Such an idea is nonsense. (laughs) (laughs) This judge... (laughs) This is... All this editing is banned. This is not me. (laughs) But um, this judge is giving her a civics lesson, right? In the midst of making his ruling. This is... I think an amazing uh, speech that he's giving her. It's not just like, shut up, (laughs) you're wrong. Moving on to the next subject, he's explaining to her appropriately why the sovereign citizen belief system is untenable in our system of government. result not in a constitutional republic, but in anarchy. Mm. This defendant's views would render all the criminal laws null and void, Mm -hmm. which is legally and practically absurd. Mm -hmm. Therefore, any relief sought by this notice is also denied. All right. So, Ms. Christensen, uh, all of the claims and papers that you have filed, I have found to be lacking in legal and factual merit, and I have denied any such relief. And That's why please stop referring to me as a defendant, and I guess the next... Oh, don't. This is... No. Okay, here we go. Not good. Don't cut off the judge now. That will be, I guess I got to do the actual filing of the claims, if you're going to deny all of those. No, those... I don't know what claims you're talking about. You filed some claims or, or notices or requests. No, I did not even file my claims yet. I did notices. I did not file my claims yet. I've been putting that off because I really don't want to have to file claims and ruin people's lives and ruin their jobs because they're not upholding my constitutional rights as a woman. She's not talking about that thing where they like file civil attachments and liens on people by ruin people's lives, because that's just harassment. Not a defendant. I am a woman only. I woman Angela. I woman Angela. I woman Angela. That's it. Not defendant. I'm not a defendant. Well, you are. (laughs) Okay, uh, in your opinion and legally, yes, but I am a woman. So do we need to do trial by jury when we can do my claims and file my court with your court at the same time? That's going to be my next step to file claims against everybody involved in this case because there is no verified claim and complaints and claims are two different things. I don't want to file claims. I'm trying very hard and I've been trying hard to not do that, but I guess if we got to keep going, that's my next step and I will file proper claims with the proper people and the insurance team for the bonding, so... Does she think she's like making threats that anyone is going to be afraid of? Because no one cares. Go and do your little, you know, legal mumbo jumbo. (laughs) But the judge, you know, talking about he's speaking legalese. The judge is telling her the truth. He's telling her what it actually is. And she's either going to accept it or, or not. But the court has the authority of the police state. They have the authority of law enforcement at their disposal. They have the authority of um, the correctional facilities at their disposal. There's so much authority there that you cannot overcome it by just making up your own belief system. I don't know what you want to do at this Ms. point. I really don't want to have to do that. Ms. Christian, I, I got to tell you, I don't know what in the heck you're talking about. You're, you're talking I know. Nonsense. So, so here's the thing. I am not going to relinquish my authority in this case. I'm not. All right? The prosecutor's office can dismiss the case. They're choosing not to. So that means we do have to go forward to a jury trial unless you want to plead guilty. All right? But what I'm also going to do is your your ramblings here today and at previous hearings, and after I reviewed your written notices, it's clear to me that you have no concept of the legal and factual issues at stake. And I would no, never know anything and, about legalese because I never went to school to do the legalese, so I don't understand that. Legalese is just really a slang term for really technical legal speak. It does not have any real force of law. Understanding legal concepts is something that many people can do with the correct study and instruction. However, it takes years of study, instruction, and practice. Um, in order to fully understand the legal system, which most people are unable to avail themselves of in time for their trial, 
because you have to teach yourself the law and then you have to learn all the legal nuances of your own case and then you better be there in time for trial. Most people are not going to be able to do that. That's why it's always better to uh, use the assistance of an attorney. The person who represents themselves has a full for client. The judge is assessing that this woman does not have the ability to um, avail herself of knowledge of the legal system and her own case because she won't even accept reality. Um, and her filings must have been very rambling and he said full of nonsense. So in order to protect her, he's likely going to assign her an attorney even though she doesn't want it. Right, you're illustrating my next point and you have no respect for the authority of the court to continue to interrupt me and such and file these nonsense claims. So I am hereby withdrawing my consent for you to represent yourself. Ooh. I'm referring this matter to the Office of Assigned Counsel for Appointment. So any papers you file in this case, I will reject because they have to be filed. Well, I don't accept that offer and I do not request. It's not an offer. Stop interrupting require you to give me a court-appointed attorney and I will self-govern because that is my right. I don't want an attorney. I don't do legalese. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful. I'm trying to be very decent. Yeah. <laughs> I stand on my paperwork and I'll do the rest of my paperwork. I will keep doing it and now I'm going to file my claims. So that's fine. But no, I don't need no legal counsel. I refuse that offer. I do not accept that offer. I'm sorry. With all due... It's not an offer. It's Respect to you. I, I don't accept that. Ms. Kristen said it wasn't an offer. So <laughs> we are scheduling this next for a docket call on February 14th at 10.30 in the morning. And that, and I'll refer to the Office of Assigned Counsel for you to have an attorney at that hearing. You are no longer allowed to represent yourself in this matter, and you will be in person in my courtroom at that date and time. I'm sorry, but I cannot be there. I can do it via Zoom, and I don't accept that offer either unless you want to compensate me for my gas and my time. I can't do that. I can't afford to. Sorry. Ms. Christensen, it's not an offer. I want to have you here because you've expressed such dis disregard for the proceedings. I want to have you here so you can your attorney. Ms. Christensen, stop interrupting me. It's not an offer. You will be here, or I will issue a warrant for your arrest if you refuse to attend in person. All right. We'll see you February 14th, or I'll issue a warrant for your arrest. You have a good day. You have a nice day. You know, I don't want to see Miss Christensen get arrested, so I hope that she takes herself to court in a timely fashion. But a lot of these things like Zoom court, you know, virtual court, and um, uh, even the ability for you to represent yourself, they are graces. They are graces from the court. Your right to represent yourself is not absolute, okay? In every state, interprets that right differently and they can revoke it if they have reason to believe that you're incompetent to represent yourself then no amount of pretrial preparation is going to make it so that you can competently represent yourself some judges don't care so some judges will just be like all right well screw yourself see if i care or not this judge clearly does care about the uh, fairness of the prosecution to her even though she's being very rude to him so he's not doing this in order to be mean to her it's order for her to have it's in order for her to have a level playing field and as far as her ability to appear virtually I don't blame him for saying that she has to physically come into court because a lot of people are getting real fast and loose when it comes to zoom court and being very disrespectful in a way that they would not otherwise be had they been in court in person it's not to say that people were not disrespectful when court was in person all the time. It's just that I see a, an uptick in misbehavior because people are sitting in the comfort of their own home. So I get the judge in that regard. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And I will talk to you later. Bye. If you hear crinkling in the background, that's Susie chewing on a piece of plastic that I forgot to get like she steals plastic from different places and then she chews on them and then you have to like hurry up and get them before she like eats them and stuff and I just like don't have the energy for it right now so it's she's good okay so that's what that noise is